In this episode, you'll learn a simple method of collaborating when you're writing music or you're producing music. Things have changed over the past couple of months, and I don't think that writing music with other musicians will ever be the same again. This is a super simple method that'll allow anyone work with you and your music wherever they are. given a workshop to a bunch of film composers and I was amazed at the levels of technical ability throughout the group. Some were very technically advanced while others really did not know much at all. We were looking at all options of collaborating over the internet from super duper audio services to recording over Zoom. How hard can that be I hear you say? Well you'd be very surprised. I want to show you a really simple method to help you and your musician friends work collaboratively and with the smallest amount of stress. Don't forget, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I will get back to you with any help I can offer. And also, click the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of this amazing Adorama content. Firstly, with any communication using Zoom or any other meeting software, there's a thing called latency. And latency is the delay between your signal going to them and the signal coming back. So if you're playing your music down the line, they hear you're playing slightly later than you're actually playing. When they go to play along, there could be up to half a second delay in some situations. It's nearly impossible to work in real time under these conditions, especially when you're working with rhythm. Another major issue is noise reduction in applications such as Meet and Zoom. These meeting software packages use noise reduction to try and bring down the surrounding noise coming across your mic sound. When playing music, it plays havoc with the sound of the music and it makes it sound really bad and squashed. You can turn off this noise reduction in Zoom in your preferences. In the audio tab, go to advanced and then check show in meeting enable original sound. This allows you the option to turn original sound on or off when you want in the meeting window. A big button on the top left hand side allows you to toggle between noise reduction on and noise reduction off. We've been looking at Audacity and the different aspects of it for some time now. I want to use Audacity because it's so simple to use. It's also free. So you're not putting anyone under pressure to buy software that they may not need. And even the not so technically minded should be able to get a recording into Audacity and send it back to you. Now you're collaborating. What I'm going to do is set up a session in Audacity and wrap it up and send it over to my pal. They can put on their contribution and send it back. And this way you can guarantee that your music production will not suffer from the issues with latency or anyone stressing about the technology. Of course, you can do the same method with any DAW, but it's much simpler when anyone and everyone is working on the same platform. So here we are. Opened Audacity, brand new session, clean slate okay and then what we're going to do is i'm going to go up here and uh first thing we got to do is determine the tempo and the meter of the track so the tempo is the speed of the track and the meter is the uh, rhythm basically in that me in that uh tempo so it's one two three four two two three four, for example Okay, we did a show on click tracks. Have a look at it, it's in the playlist. First off, we go to generate, we go to rhythm track, which is a funky name for it, but anyway. Uh, we're going for a rhythm track, the tempo is 120 beats per minute, four beats per bar, okay? I've just selected 616 for absolutely no other reason than just it's a number of bars that we can get and generate. The pitch is the, the pitch, uh, the high pitch is the root, of the beat, so it's so it's a okay. So that's all that is. You can 
tweak the, p- the pitch if you would like. Okay, so I hit OK. And now this is generating our click track. Now the click track is there to keep everyone in time. So if I send this session to Joe Bloggs and he does his bit, he can send the exact same session over to Jane Bloggs. She can do her bit. And then whoever else can do all their bits, but we're all working to the same click track. So in theory, everyone should be playing in time. So we can send this session to whoever we want and as many times as well. So have a listen to this. Okay, so that's our click track. Now, I would sit down and play a beautiful repertoire of incredible chords and and rals and whatever on my guitar, but I'm going to cheat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. I'm going to bring in audio. And these are just two audio files that I was working on as part of a, a thing. So they're the way they were labeled, right? That's just the name of the track, the beat and the key what key it's in. Okay, so I'm just going to open that. Now, imagine I zoomed in here. Okay, there is these tracks, which are beautiful. I can copy those, put that on there, and then let me just hear that. So, we're going to pretend that we have our beautiful click track and we have our beautiful pieces that I've put down, um, which basically means that we have a working template. So, for example, this is our click track. This is our, our these are our drums. These are our bass, I have guitar tracks, I have synthesizers in there, or maybe I just have a guitar. It's all up to you how you want to do it. Now, the next thing is we're going to grab this and we're going to send it over to our pal who's waiting for it. What I do next is, and just to make sure there's no confusion because he's not terribly technically advanced, and that's why we're working to Audacity, because it's super simple for an awful lot of people. We generate add a new track, I know he's playing, say, a guitar, and he's going to be using a a mono uh, microphone. So there, mono track, there it is. I'm going to move this up, okay? Can I just drag it up? I can. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to do that. I'm going to go add new, and another mono track, just for a separate take, okay? So that's it, lads. You are now in a position to collaborate with your pal down the road, overseas, 40 feet under the ground, wherever they can pick this session up, okay? So we're all good to go. All they have to know how to do is turn off the mute if it's not, or to mute the click track if it's not affecting them, if it's affecting them adversely, or maybe the bass, they want to redo the bass, so turn off the bass, go up to the record channel, hit record and redo the bass. They do their contribution. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to close this session. I want to save it. Yeah, whatever that's saying, close saving thing. So let's call it Rich Party, in Rich Party, in downloads. Okay, pretend. AUP, we're ex- saving the session, not the files. Okay, remember that from the previous shows? Okay, and there's that saved. So what I do then is I go over to my folders. Where, oh, where? Let me just grab this folder here. Rich Party. Okay, there's the files. The data and the AUP, which is this project file and the audio. I go and I either put it through Win or a or for um, Windows machines, which is a super utility and it's free. Win or a or it just gives you so many options, including zipping files. So by you zipping, it's grabbing a load of files and squishing and squashing it down into one little file, and you can send that single file to whoever in the world, and they'll be able to unzip it. Okay, so I'm just going to compress these two items. That gives me that archive. It's doing it on the other window. Okay, so that's all zipped up. I'm going to take this. So everyone knows what we're doing. I'm going to name it the track. 
the tempo and the key. Okay? And I email that to my pals. Or I send it via you send it, uh, my Airbridge, one of those services, or I leave it on a drive and I share the Google Drive with them. It's just a way of getting it because you can't email that to anyone because it's 38.3 meg. Generally, well, I know with Gmail, you can only uh, email 25 meg. Okay, so imagine I'm Joe Bloggs now sitting in wherever, my 40 feet under the ground in my hobbit hole, I receive and download my file, my zip file. I double click it. It opens it up. There's a folder. I open it up. There's my session file. I open my session file and there's all my data on this window because <laughs> you can't see that. So I'm going to bring it over to this window so you can see it. And hello. Oh, it won't come over. But anyway, that said, there's the whole session. That's it. As simple as that. Then Mr. Bloggs can sit down. He has his bass. He has his guitar. He has his piano. He has whatever he has. And he can plug any USB microphone, select it there and select it there. Why don't you just zoom him now and talk him through all this? Phone him on the telephone, imagine, being so archaic. And just talk him through it soon as they're comfortable because if your musician isn't comfortable with the technology and they're freaking out at what's going on they're not going to give you the performance that you could get if they're totally relaxed with this yeah so that's how simple it is just make it as simple as possible set up your click track set up your music tracks if he doesn't like listening to that specific bass and he wants to do it again mute it record your new bass You've set up the tracks, you've set everything up, you can phone them, you can talk them through it, but it's simplicity itself. And you'll be rocking and rolling before you know it. Simplest method of collaboration possible. Too simplistic for some, but when you're dipping your toe into the ocean of sound and music production, then it's, it's nice to ease yourself in. I'm Keith Alexander and you've been watching Adorama TV. Don't forget to subscribe to Adorama TV for more great videos and tell us what you think. You can like and you can comment and you can share this video. And please come by the Adorama Learning Center for more great tips and tricks.